Tell you, man, when I was a kid, blacks used to be really tough. Blacks were like tough, 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 tough blacks, right? And now they're all like cream puffs, right? They're crying. They cry racism at every turn of the screw, man. Shit is crazy, right? Fucking shit how, shit how, how things change, man, right? So, so Baltimore, Baltimore, uh, Democratic Baltimore confirms Trump's comments on, oh, my God, you can smell the rats and dead animals. So what did Trump do? Trump said something, right? Trump says some shit, right? Here's, uh, this guy's calling Trump a racist. Trump said, someone please explain to Nancy Pelosi, who was recently called racist by those in her own party, that there is nothing wrong with bringing out the very obvious fact that Congressman Eli Elijah Cummings has done a very poor job for his district and the city of Baltimore. Just take a look. The facts speak far louder than words. The Democrats always play the race card when, in fact, they have done so little for our nation's great African-American people. Now, lowest unemployment in U.S. history. <laughs> Wrong. And only getting better. Elijah Cummings has failed badly. Ah, so that's Trump being Trump, right? Trump takes a stab, right? And so that's, so, so the, the community... He's a racist. Trump's a racist. Uh, however, despite the tears and uh, so they're, they're trying to pin Trump's comments as racist. Uh, so they're doing right, but but look what happened, right? So so that's Trump saying it. When Trump, the white man, says it, it's it's racist. All right, but look at this. Here's, here's the mayor of Baltimore saying the exact same thing. About a year ago, city leaders identified some of the city's most violent neighborhoods. What the hell? We should just take all this down. To target. Ooh, you can smell the rats. Under Baltimore's Violence Reduction Initiative. Ooh, Jesus. Just last week, we went with Mayor Pugh as she toured an East Baltimore neighborhood. This a new one. I've been out here 54 years. This a new one. Baltimore's Violence Reduction Initiative is about taking steps to rid communities of the cornerstones that contribute to crime. Oh, my God. You can smell the dead animals. Blocks of dilapidated buildings help to hide the addiction that's crippled this community. Ah, uh-huh. so so there there you have it. The mayor said it. The mayor of the county says, and and Elijah Humming Cummings says it's a racist comment, racist tweets. Wow, who else said it? Who else said it? Look at this guy. Remember this guy? Remember this guy he was taking a walk down down Baltimore streets with his black brothers in hand. Hey. Uh, the good senator from Vermont. Let's listen. Oh, you got to move it. We spend $80 billion a year locking people up in this country. We wouldn't have to do that if people had jobs and if people had education. And we've got to transform our national priorities, invest in our... Walking arm in arm with the people of the good Congress people and, and activists of Baltimore. Invested in housing rather than more and more jails. Uh, the fact of the matter is is that America is the wealthiest country in the history of the world. But anyone who took the walk that we took, we took around this neighborhood would not think you're in a wealthy nation. You would think that you were in a third world country. We do not need to give more tax breaks to millionaires and billionaires. We need to start investing. This is from 2016. Bernie Sanders on the campaign trail. Bernie Sanders in communities all over this country today that are hurting, that are often forgotten about. This is the wealthiest country in the history of the world. We can create a society in which all of our people have a decent standard of living, not a society in which almost all new income and wealth goes to the top 1%. That's what I'm dedicated to changing. <laughs> All right, what about ISIS, guys? How often are these people talking about the issues that we talked about today? <laughs> of course I'll talk about ISIS. But today what we're talking about is a community in which half of the people don't have jobs. We're talking about a community in which there are hundreds of buildings that are uninhabitable. We're talking about a community where kids are unable to go to schools that are decent. You want to ask me about ISIS? We will talk about ISIS. But what I said, and let me repeat, and you can agree with me or not, what I have said is that obviously ISIS and terrorism 
are a huge national issue. The Bernie Sanders is smart. Whatever this is, this is common and you know common, right? The, he's he's out there campaigning. He's he's looking good. He's in the black community. He's 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 working the you know he's working it with the uh, with the activists in Baltimore, the Congress people, right? And what do they do? They throw a a, 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 a a diversion at him. What about ISIS, Bernie? Talk about ISIS. No, we're here to talk about you know rat infested uh, neighborhood. And uh, and no jobs, right? And Bernie Sanders did a great job of doing that three years before Trump did it. We've got to address, but so is poverty. Could you imagine Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump on the on the debate stage? You're a socialist. You're a billionaire. Ugh, look at, oh, is so crazy. is unemployment. So is education. So is health care. So is the need to protect working families. And I will, I will continue to talk about those issues. Thank you, Bernie Sanders, right? What else did Bernie say, man? Bernie's always, no matter where you find a, no matter what, what's, a, what's in the news. So, so just to conclude on the, uh, the Trump thing, is Trump a racist? Of course Trump's not a racist. Trump is pointing out that, the, that uh, Baltimore is falling apart. The senator, right, is that what he is, Cummings? Is he congressman, a senator? Whatever he is, representative from, from Baltimore, is, uh, is uh, letting his town fall down the shithole, right? Just like Nancy Pelosi in San Francisco. Same thing. Bags of shit all over the place, needles everywhere. Fix the problem. Address your own problem. Right? See, that's the conversation that we should be having tomorrow at the debates. But I feel I have a sense that we're not going to be talking about any of those things at all. So here's, here's an interesting one. Bernie Sanders at, at the town hall. Everybody says, well, what is Bernie? Bernie's a Jew. Bernie's an old Jew, right? What is he? Where does he stand on Israel? Doesn't He's got to be a, an Israeli... Israel protect us. So listen to Bernie Sanders call call out Israel in his own words. Hmm. Ah, I got jammed. I got jammed. Please don't make me watch a commercial. I don't want to watch a commercial. I got to watch a commercial. The radical left smeared Judge Kavanaugh. Let's just, just wait a second on that one. So we'll watch Bernie Sanders. Um, We'll watch Bernie Sanders. We've got to wait about 30 seconds to see Bernie talk about Israel with, with, um, with uh, Chris Cuomo. And uh, a guy is going to ask him, what do, what do you think? What's the solution, Bernie? Give us a solution in Israel, man. What are you going to do? Aren't you going to flatten him like everybody else, man? I think it's a Jew who asks him the question, so let's see. Hold on a second. Oh, CNN, you're making it so difficult. Cities of life to all of our people. All right, you said that you've also been thinking more recently about foreign policy. So let's get a question on that. Um, Shelley Tisrulik, a junior at Harvard studying astrophysics from New Jersey. Oh, God, don't ask me about astrophysics. I think he's got his yarmulke on. Please. What's his name? From New Jersey. Oh, God, don't ask me about astrophysics. A junior at Harvard studying astrophysics from foreign policy. So let's get a question on that. Um, Shelley Tisrulik, a junior at Harvard studying... <laughs> Shelley, Shelley Weisberg. <laughs> Can't make it up. Astrophysics from New Jersey. Oh, God. Don't ask me about astrophysics, please. <laughs> I won't. I promise. Okay. Hi, Senator Sanders. You've been an outspoken critic of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, yep. yet Israel is also one of America's most important allies in the world. Given that Prime Minister Netanyahu just won another term in office, how do you plan to maintain the strong U.S.-Israel relationship despite those critiques? Look, what I have said over and over again, and I repeat to you, and uh, I happen to as a young man... Tulsi Gabbard, pay attention. At your age, I spent a number of months uh, in Israel. I, I worked on a kibbutz for a while. Uh, I have family in Israel. I am not anti-Israel. But the fact of the matter is that Netanyahu is a right-wing politician who I think is treating uh, the Palestinian people extremely unfairly. So, you know, what I believe, you know, and the United States gives billions of dollars in, in military aid to Israel. What I believe is not radical. I just believe that the United States should deal with the Middle East on a level playing field basis. In other words, the goal must be to try to bring people together and not just support one country, which is now run by a right wing, you know, dare I say, racist government. So. Wow.
He just called Israel a right-wing racist government. Holy smokes. I thought Bernie Sanders now Trump is saying we love we love Israel. Ah, Israel, I love Israel. That's Trump, right? So to Trump people, right? You got you got Bernie Sanders on the right side of history saying that uh Israel is a racist nation, they, you know, with the BDS stuff. They got legislation in our Congress. Uh, it's just, I don't know, man. How do you guys you bash, bash Bernie? Oh, no, no, he's a millionaire. <laughs> Here's Bernie one more time. This is just because the debate is tomorrow, right? Is Bernie going to talk about any of this? And I'm gonna give ben, I'll give Bernie Sanders a pep, a pep talk, I'll tell you. Bernie, this is what you say, man. When they say, when they say, are you, how are you going to do, Bernie, about gun, guns, gun violence in America? You look right into the camera and you say, you see all these 10 shit sandwiches on the table, on the board right here, on the, up on the board? They're all here repeating what I said f- 40 years ago, right? Finally, they're coming around to it. None of them deserve... None of, the, none of them deserve your respect. None of them deserve your attention. I am the man. Vote for me for president, and I will implement some, sh- impl- implement some shit in this country, and we'll bring everybody, we'll, bring, we'll, 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 we'll attack income and wealth inequality. That's what you say, Bernie. You tell them, you tell them you're the leader. All these people are parroting you. For Christ's sake, Bernie, say it. If it's clear that you are not going to be the Democratic nominee, will you leave the race? <laughs> Listen to the question they asked Bernie Sanders. If it's clear you're not going to be the Democratic nominee, will you throw your support to the shit sandwich? That's what they ask him, right? Listen again. It's unbelievable. It's the only candidate they ask that. That you are not going to be the Democratic nominee. Will you leave the race before the convention? I intend to be the Democratic nominee. But if you're not, you stayed no, in last I, uh, no. time. And some oh, people say wait, that but, but, you but, but, hurt some, Hillary Clinton's candidacy. Well, no, some people say that if maybe that system was not rigged against me, I would have won. Oh, shit. He used the R word. He said rigged. Did Bernie Sanders say if the, if the election wasn't rigged against me? Let's see. Candidacy. Well, no, some people say that if maybe that system was not rigged against me, <laughs> I would have won the nomination and defeated Donald Trump. That's right, man. We did say that, and that's true. But Bernie, you got to say it for yourself, man. You can't just say, oh, some people said, right? That's a bit of a scapegoat, but he's saying it. Bernie Sanders, everybody wanted to know, did Bernie Sanders call out the rigging? Well, he just did, and that was right before the Democratic uh, debate, the CNN debate, the last uh, 20 car pileup. It was not rigged against me. I would have won the... Some people say... That if maybe that system was not rigged against me, I would have won the nomination and defeated Donald Trump. That's what some people say. So I think we're going to play it out. I think I am uh, excited. So you would take the risk. I am you excited. Ex- Donald Trump are you asking advantage. that of every candidate? I'm I mean- saying. <laughs> Even Bernie calls her out. Are you asking that of every candidate? Are you asking Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, will you throw your support to the nominee if you're not the nominee? No, they never ask him that. The corporatist Democrats. Never get asked that question by the corporatist uh, uh, media. Why? Because they're on the same team. Bernie Sanders is the uh, is the uh, is the insurgent. And if it's clear uh, uh, yeah, that you are not going to win not, the nomination, me, will well, you concede? Well, right now we are planning to win the Democratic nomination, and I'm proud of the campaigns we're running in Iowa and in New Hampshire, and I'm proud of our grass. <laughs> Bernie said. Do you ask that? Do you ask the other candidates? That shit was funny. Through support and the fact that we have a million volunteers. So our goal right now is to win it. And by the way, as you may know, poll after poll shows what against Trump. Shows me beating Trump by eight, nine, or ten points. That was an interesting piece right there. What else we got here? Did we watch? uh... Oh, yeah, we watched that one. We watched this one. We watched the other one. So Bernie Sanders is fucking rising, man. I don't know. I don't know, man. That's all. That's all I want to say about it. So, so back to the to the topic. I just I I know I went off on a tangent on Bernie Sanders because tomorrow is the, uh, but but the fact is that that it's it, it is interesting that Trump, the the white male, the white males, an assault on white males in this country. We know that to be true, right? Every black. That's the that's the identity politics that the Democrats have decided to play. Fuel, you know, uh, uh, rev up the blacks. They hate the whites. Make the blacks think that all the all the problems in their lives are a result of white people. Well, maybe a few white people, a few billionaires at the top. They have if they happen to be white, but it's not necessarily white people. It's billionaires. It's it's corporate oligarchy that's causing the goddamn problems. 
Uh, but instead, the, the oligarchy who controls the board and uh, wants you to believe that it has something to do with race. So the Democrats, if they play this card, if they continue to play this card, and tomorrow CNN will definitely be asking the questions on race, they'll be asking the questions on guns, they'll be asking the questions about how Trump is a racist and a misogynist, you know, and, and, and all this stuff, right? And, and what will never be asked uh, is the financial crises, the, the homelessness crises, the, the uh, drug epidemic, the crumbling infrastructure in cities, right? They don't want to talk about that. They're not going to talk about it unless you make them talk about it. So, again, for Tuesday, Sanders must, must don't even listen to the question, Bernie. So just, just ignore the question. When they ask you, you know, uh, how, what do you think about Israel, you, you, you flip them the finger and you say, listen, these people are only up here. Con- they should be supporting me. They shouldn't be running against me. Why does everybody all of a sudden want to be president? I, you should, they should be getting behind me. I, I, I have 70% approval rating in this country. Become Trump for just one second. Talk about yourself, Bernie, because you can. You can do it, Bernie. You can do it. Marcus Conte reporting.